Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and good evening to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for August 29th, 2016. Public comment period. Senator, it's nice to see you. It's always nice to see you. Thank you. I'm Nancy Stiles from One Hayden Circle in Hampton, and I'd like to speak to you tonight about a couple of the items you have under Roman 6 and 7. And that's that project that has been in the making up off of uh, Route 27 across from CRs. Um, I'd just like to thank you for the, the work that you've done on it, and hopefully we can get that project moving forward because we know that that's half a million plus dollars of tax revenue for the uh, town of Hampton, and it also increases the uh, conservation land by 14, 14 acres. And we're looking for jobs, <coughs> $35 million in jobs not to mention the great demand that there is for the Alzheimer's units. So I'm really hoping that we can get that project moving forward as quickly as possible so they can get some building done before we see snow since next week's September. I mean, this week is, no. this week is September? Yeah, this, no, next week is September. Uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. I lose track of time after all since I'm retired. <laughs> I can't remember which day it is. But it's really a win-win for everybody. It's a win for, um, the business community, it's a win for the town, it's a win for um, the patients and so forth. So I am optimistic that you will handle this in a very professional manner and really demonstrate that Hampton is a community that's open for business. Very good. I apologize that I will not be staying. I'm flying out in the morning and I haven't even thought about packing yet. So <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, but I'll be watching you on TV. Right, thank thank you. you. Safe flight. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Tomorrow, school starts, opens. There'll be a lot of students on the street. Every day you see people exceeding the speed limits in residential areas. You know, if people would just obey the law, drive safely, and watch out for the children going to school, please do that. Phil? Oh. Negative, sir. Thank you. The only thing I'd like to remind people is on September 13th, I believe is elections mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is the primary elections and that will be held at the Marston School not at the Winnicott High School so the elections in September will be at the Marston School on September 13th and the elections in November which I believe is the 8th which is the presidential election and the general election that will be at the Winnicott High School so just make sure that when you go, get out there, and I hope everybody gets out and votes, that we, uh, we do that at the appropriate places and times. All right. <clears throat> we have the consent agenda. We have a Hampton Cemetery deed. We have a use of town property for a wedding ceremony. We have a seafood festival sidewalk vendor licenses. I move to... Accept the consent agenda. Motion to accept the Second. consent agenda. Seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Announcements. Mr. Ben Moore, the Tech Museum. Good evening. Good evening, Ben. How are you tonight? I'm well. Um, the reason for appearing before you is to seek your approval and to authorize the town manager. I think that's the way the manager and the uh, attorney would like that done to donate a clock face from the uh, Oddfellows property to the Historical Society. By way of background, the Oddfellows building and the clock tower that was on top of it that stored the town clock burned in 1990. Among the items salvaged was one, at least one clock face, one that I know of, yep. and that has been around for 26 years. It's been in the possession of the group of volunteers who have been working on the clock for some number of years and there was discussion and debate about whether that clock face would be incorporated into the new <coughs> building. Ultimately it was decided not to use the original and to make 
uh, new clock faces, which you can now see on the uh, tower. And this has become surplus to at least the group of volunteers. So the process at the Historical Society and Tuck Museum is that everything that comes in the door requires a deed of gift um, so that we have our records clear. And the deed of gift has to be signed by, well, it's been, there's, there's been some signed by the manager in the past. Um, so it's a question of uh, a motion, I suppose, being made to approve the donation and to authorize the manager to execute. And I have a couple of small other items if okay. after the discussion on this. We have a discussion on the clock face. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. Second by Regina. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Item number two is that tentatively we have set October the 23rd, a Sunday, to do the turnover process. Uh, we expect to be complete at that time. The items that are necessary to complete right now are electrical work, uh, landscaping work, and the installation of the clock, which is kind of an important feature. Uh, we expect the clock to be done by the end of September and the rest of the bits to be finished in October or before. So we're pretty safe, we think, in setting the 23rd of October as the turnover ceremony. We'll have refreshments and uh, we'll give the key to somebody. So that, uh, is, that is a Sunday? It is a Sunday. Okay, very good. Last but not least, it would be totally inappropriate of me to come in at this time of year to a selectman's meeting and not mention the pig roast. Uh, the Historical Society's main fundraiser of the year. It's up there on the oh, is TV it? right now. How clever, those, how clever those, those guys, guys are. Really are. Pretty clever. <laughs> um, September the 10th, tickets are available at Parks and Rec <laughs> upstairs, at Morelli's Market, at the Provident Bank. Uh, or at the Historical Society itself. We usually have a great crowd and a good time, and uh, we hope that the town supports us as it has in the past. Very good. And that's all I got. Pig Roast is always a good time. I noticed the uh, Experience Hampton had bought 10 tickets for the sailors on the USS Hampton. Oh, good. So hopefully they will be able to join us for that, that event. I think that would be kind of neat to have them come over. That's great. So, um, but... Like I said, you can get tickets. There's a number of places to get it, and I hope everybody supports it. Thank you, Rusty. Any questions for any anybody who's not seen the, the tower and the clock should really drive by Center School, and <clears throat> it looks really nice, and it's going to be a great addition. Absolutely. And the school has been fantastic during the summer, as we've uh, as the, the contractors and whatnot have kind of uh, taken possession of their front yard, and uh, Keith and and the rest of the team have been uh, very helpful. But it's, yeah, it's looking pretty good. It should, it should be a, we hope a project that doesn't take much maintenance. That's the goal. Okay. Thank good you, night, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next one is Peter Ross. <clears throat> I don't see Peter here. I thought he was. Peter is not in the building. Oh. So we'll come back to him if he shows up. Um, <clears throat> the next one is the Village by the Sea, and I don't see them here either. Uh, do we have anything from them? Did we? I know Christina called them today. So, okay, seeing they're not here, we'll go on to town manager's report. Uh, that was fast. That was real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the Department of Public Works has begun the process of. Uh, Grading the streets for, for and the paving has been put in. Uh, Watson's Lane, Heritage, uh, Landing Road South uh, have been completed. Uh, they have done a number of other streets and they are continuing cleanup and, and edge work and so forth. So that those streets should be in good shape. That will complete their work so far will complete all the streets that were on the town, town uh, meeting warrant. So and we may be doing some extras if we have the uh, by the time we finish we have the extra funds. Uh, I'd like people to please pay attention to the newly installed state no parking signs in front of the walk restaurant. We understand that uh, uh, those the area has been striped, so it's pretty hard to miss the fact that you can't park there, although I must confess that I was by there the other night and I saw a big truck park right in the middle of no parking zone. Um, if you've not paid your dog licenses, please do so so that your state fines will uh, stop compounding. 
Uh, if you've not paid and settled your license and, uh, and the penalties at the end of, by the end of August, uh, I know the police department is beginning the process of issuing summonses for court. The 29th is the last day uh, for the seafood festival permits. Uh, actually, it's today uh, because that's the way it is to be authorized. Uh, and I think we had just three this evening. I think that's that's the end of them. Uh, construction continues on new water lines on Lafayette Road. Uh, the cleanup is underway. Uh, please be watchful for movements of construction vehicles. And as uh, one of our learned selectmen said tonight, schools open. Be careful. Uh, there are plenty of uh, young people out on the streets. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also want to make note that uh, we have a fire engine, a 1988 emergency one uh, pumper, and we have two uh, suburban fire sedans, a 2003 and a 2004. Uh, I wouldn't say they're in prime condition, but they are for sale, and there are bid documents that are obtainable in the selectman's office. Uh, those bids have to be in by 3 p.m. on August 31st. So we'd like to uh, we'd like to sell those pieces of equipment and, and get that done. Um, I was handed, and I believe I handed out to the board, uh, a request from the fire department for a power load system. For ambulance number one the chassis on that ambulance is slightly higher uh, and to lift uh, the, the compounding stretches that we have into that ambulance without this particular device uh, we've already sustained two injuries uh, doing that so uh, there is there are funds uh, in order to uh, to purchase this piece of equipment in the ambulance account it's eight thousand seven hundred and six dollars and eighty eight cents um, the total cost with all the add-ons is $22,535.38, and this will stop those injuries. And uh, the fire chief had asked that, that I ask for that. This is, the item is a uh, single purchase item. It is not available except for one vendor. It's a Stokes, uh, and if you want, we'll put it out to bid, but there are no other vendors that provide this piece of equipment. And it's the only piece of equipment that we get up into and over the, the back of the ambulance in order to put the people into the ambulance itself without forcing them to be lifted uh, into the back on the stretcher. And, sir, that's almost it. I will tell you that uh, the state of New Hampshire today notified us that uh, they have increased our highway block grant to $307,854 from $299,000. So we pick up an extra... Uh, Seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-four dollars this year, and that and that will be on the town warrant for expenditure, uh, along with the uh, paving portion for streets in the town next year. Okay, thank you. Questions for the manager? I don't have any questions. Sir. Do we need to make a motion on that uh, stretcher? If you wish to do it, yes. Uh, if you wish to hold it over till the next meeting, that's fine too. Uh, I just I was concerned because we already have two uh, firefighters who've been hurt. Uh, lifting people into the ambulance, and I think that's something that we probably need to get as soon as we can. And you said the funds are available? The funds are available in the ambulance account. In the ambulance account? Yes. And, I mean, just have, if people are going to be out work on workman's comp or we're paying overtime for people to fill the positions, it just seems <coughs> to me like it would be a, a wise uh, purchase. And there's only one it's only one vendor. One vendor. It would be a motion to authorize the purchase <coughs> from the ambulance fund and also to waive the purchasing, uh, purchasing policy. If I, if I may just uh, ask this question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. I, I, I support the notion on that. Um, I'm talking about the uh, bidding process. This memo from uh, the chief is 26 August. Today's the 29th. Um, in this, in this memo from the chief, does it state that there is only one source provider. Yes, I saw it in here, but if you ask me to find it at the moment, I can't. I, can't I believe get it. it I read it this afternoon. Yeah. And I believe it did. It does say it someplace. Yeah. This is a single purchase provider. It does say that. Yeah, somewhere in this four pages of gobbledygook. The other, the other thing is, and just looking at this, is uh, the balloon of the striker stretcher which is what they already have and if um, and, and from what I'm taking and I don't know for sure this ambulance is two inches higher 
the ones that they have. I'm not able to do that. That's correct. It does say that, um, if I remember, the cost of the system with the applied discount 22535.38, the power load system is a striker product and their sole source provided right. documentation is provided. So incorporating that into the motion and that, and that it does adhere to the purchasing uh, policy, I would support that tonight. So I have a motion by <coughs> Jim, seconded by Bill. Sure. All those in favor? Four unanimous. Thank you. Any other questions for the town manager? Jim. No. Phil. Negative, sir. Yeah, a couple things I have is you brought up the paving. Um, the company that's building the new houses out on Drake Side Road on, on yes. near Toll Farm, um, they opened up the road to put into our sewer. Right. And two weeks ago they patched, they put a base coat in the trench, and it's still, for two weeks it's been left with a with an inch and a half, a two inch bump there, and people are driving all around it to get away from it. Uh, no, that um, be. So I think two and a half week or two weeks is more than two enough weeks time. Two settlements, fine. They need to put a permanent patch on it. So Next year they need to go back and take that patch out and redo the paving. So can we ask the public works director? In the morning. And the other thing I had was uh, unless he's here, I don't see him. <laughs> okay. Oh, sh Denver. well, our assistant director is, well, so I'm sure she got the message. That's pretty close. <laughs> so and the other thing was you mentioned the sale of the fire department vehicles. And that is also on the web, uh, the town's website. Yes, so you can is. get the uh, them there. Now, who, who are you, people? Hi, uh, we're uh, the condo managers. At okay, we, the we we apologize for being tardy. Well, we already got by that part, but we'll, uh, since you're here, we will come back to that. Uh, so, the village by the sea uh, condos. Yes. Come sit up here, please. Sure. Thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to come in and uh, ask for your guidance. My name is Ken Spatola, and I'm the president of the association. And my name is Mary Ann McDonough, and I'm the treasurer of the association. Okay. Okay. Longtime residents there. Uh, uh, we've uh, owned a condo there since it was built in 1975. Um, we're, we're really here to ask for your guidance. Uh, the owners in the condo would like to recycle. And we have not done recycling at all yet in all these many years. Uh, it's our understanding that uh, it is mandatory to recycle in town. Is that correct? It's only mandatory if we pick the trash up. Okay. If, if it's done privately, then you don't have to. You have to get rid of it with your regular trash. Okay. Uh, right now we pay or have paid for years to have our trash picked up. Mm -hmm. So... People are putting in the uh, water bottles, they're putting in the milk uh, plastic containers, they're putting everything, paper, cardboard, everything into our trash bin, if you will. Um, of course, you know, they, they see other buildings nearby that have recycling pickup. So they've asked us as the managers to, why can't we do that too? And uh, our hope was to find some solution uh, realizing that there are some ordinances in the town. Um, even if it was a very small number of bins, we would be happy with that, just to have some recycling pickup at our condo. And we, we have a total of uh, 12 units, but two separate buildings. So maybe you could treat one building. One building has only two condo units in it, and the other one has 10. But all the same complex. All the same complex. All considered village by the sea. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they look across the street and they see the the uh, recycle bins at uh, the condo complex that is even larger than ours, and say we would like to do the same to me. So I need to respond. Okay. Um, would you like to, Mr. Chairman? You currently have a regulation that allows the Public Works Department to pick up. Um, materials at condominium complexes as long as there are five or less units. So without changing that, we can't do it. And if you do, then we'll have to start picking up every uh, condo complex that has 12 or less units. Regina, you got me? What is, so you're saying that there's another condo association that's getting their trash picked up? Uh, there's a condo across the street that the people see, the owners see, and it has 16 units, and they have their recycle bins, and I guess they have maybe trash pickup, too. I'm not sure. 
which Sandpiper Bay. C. Sandpiper Bay. On Winnicunnet Road. Last, it's across last from the, the new. That's right. Um, right by the, right by the uh, river. Right by the. Yeah, right by the bridge. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's why it's Sandpiper. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, to sandpiper. Those little devils are over there. Too. <laughs> that's it. Right. We uh, we worked pretty hard on this this uh, ordinance three or four months ago. Yes, you uh, did. We spent a lot of time on this. Uh, first, well, you got anything else? Okay. Does the ordinance say trash or recycling? Or does it say trash solid and waste. recycling? Solid waste. All waste? Solid, solid waste. waste, yeah. Solid waste. It's all solid waste. So is recycling solid? Because my point of view is if you're encouraging recycling and it's pot, you know, I still have that point of view that if you're encouraging recycling and it's positive and can be done, and if it's, but we already have the ordinance, yeah. We understand that we cannot um, receive trash pickup from the town. We understand that. That's part of our condo docks. But we really would like to be good citizens of the town and recycle. And three quarters of our occupants are senior citizens. And it does create an issue with getting them to the uh, recycling um, center. <coughs> but if we could even, um, even though we are a, a unit of 12, if we could only, if we could just get five buckets in, at least we would make a t an attempt at um, recycling with our uh, condo association. I think the, the hardest part of that is is it's all solid waste, and that's what the ordinance says. It doesn't dis discriminate against trash and 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 uh, you know, it's recyclables. Yeah, and the board has said that we will pick up anything in a condominium complex with five or less units. The problem is if you have 12, if if the board approves 12, then we'll have to get carts for every every complex in town that has 12 or less units. So we're really doubling the the amount of material. It doesn't matter how many carts, we still have to stop and pick each one up. Is, is there some way to separate um, the gross trash and recycles and just recycling? Well, because you have two separate companies doing it, right? We have no. We do all of it ourselves. Oh, okay. So uh, they have different colored uh, receptacles that the material is put into. Yeah. The problem is the number the number of receptacles that have to be put out, and the time it <coughs> excuse me and the time it takes to pick them all up. Uh, right now, we're to the point where uh, we have no highway employees. They're all out picking up trash. So we're not getting any highway work done. We usually don't get any highway work done unless we can hire a contractor. Uh, so if we add more to the load, uh, that's going to be even more difficult because we now have to pick up additional units. And most, some condos have a requirement that they, uh, in their condominium documents, that their solid waste has to be picked up and taken care of by the condominium itself, mm -hmm. and others do not. Mm -hmm. And that's why you probably see sandpiper being picked up by the town because they don't have it in their documents. So it's not a requirement for them in their condominium documents. Mm -hmm. And there are a few like that in town, but not too many. And that would have happened during the planning board stage when, yes. they, when they initially yep. got approved? So they were basically grandfathered for, this new, for these new uh, regulations? Yes, I'd say so, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it wouldn't matter that we were 12, but only requested five wouldn't matter. Well, you're 12, so if, you know, uh, on that basis, uh, I would say that if somebody came in with 150 units and requested five, yeah. uh, we'd have to give them five probably. I don't see how you get around that if you're going to make the exception. Right. So you'd yeah. be picking up every condominium unit in town, and there are about 3,000 of them. Oh, no, excuse me, about 6,000 of them. So. We'd have to accommodate every condominium in town, even the ones on private roads. Mm. So it gets to be a yeah. difficult situation. It's unfortunate because we really do want to recycle. Yeah. It's very important to all of us. You understand. Yeah. Mm. You know, basically, unless the ordinance changes, where our hands are, you know, that's the way it's been written. So. <clears throat> yeah. Um, do we have the option of uh, changing our condo docks? Is that uh, would that ever work? You'd have to come back to the planning board and start the condominium all over again. Wow, 
Yeah, too much to them. Too that's much, that's yeah. a big job. That's, that's a, a big huge job. job. You'd have to void the current condominium documents and start from scratch. So yeah, it, it gets to be impossible. Yeah, I understand. Phil yeah. Th thank you for your concern. Thank you oh. for your long term uh, tenure and uh, uh, your residency in town. And uh, Rusty and the town manager have spoken to the issue. Uh, there's an ordinance. Uh, uh, equally as important is, is uh, a law, and we start making exceptions, uh, chaos will prevail. I encourage you to continue to recycle. I encourage uh, uh, you, Ken, the young the young buck in the condo association to be <laughs> recycling down to the uh, transfer station. There's great guys, and uh, um, I think you can muscle up and do it. All right. Well, thank you for your thank time. Thank you for your consideration, okay. Ken. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yep. <clears throat> okay. And now we are under old business. Okay. Acceptance of a warranty deed, map 66, lots 1 and 3. Okay. Uh, this is one of the two aspects of the cornerstone at Hampton development that has uh, taken up a great deal of attention this summer. This particular aspect has to do with the so-called conservation swap, and that has to do with... Uh, there are three parcels, actually, <coughs> one of them, lot, map 66, lot 1, is, uh, is proposed to be conveyed pursuant to the uh, planning board approval of February 3, 2016. That's not part of the conservation swap, but was required by a mitigation of uh, wetlands impact. Uh, the other two lots that are involved are map 66, lot 3, and map 51, lot 3. And those two parcels were involved uh, due to the fact that there was a six years remaining on the uh, on the uh, conservation e a no build conservation easement uh, that covered uh, 298 Exeter Road, where the cornerstone parcel was to be built. And so, uh, in order to uh, try to get around that. Uh, the, these other parcels were offered in exchange, and because you cannot terminate a conservation easement without uh, essentially uh, modifying a trust, it was necessary to go to the probate court. <coughs> and so uh, Attorney Class's office, Attorney Michael Class is here from the office of Bernstein Shure representing <coughs> asset title, um, and my office uh, prepared documents to be filed with the probate court and we have received uh, uh, today uh, copies of a probate court order allowing uh, this conservation swap to occur and to uh, along the way terminate the, uh, the no build easement and to record the two uh, to other uh, documents to be received by the Hampton Conservation Commission. Now the problem we have is that this is all part of a package. The other aspect of this package is the uh, sewer uh, services agreement and uh, Liberty Lane Sewer Association documents that you see under new business. And so uh, we have been working for uh, uh, several months now to get these documents in place <coughs> and I think you're going to hear from attorney clash shortly that these are in fact not in place uh, to answer uh, Senator Stiles uh, my office the Department of Public Works as the assistant town manager the town manager have all been working furiously to try to get these documents in place and agreed to and presented to this board tonight so that uh, they could be approved by this board as sewer commissioners so as to enable the cornerstone uh, development to go forward in a timely manner, uh, it having been represented to us that unless cornerstone could get started by September 1, the project would not be able to be done. And we have uh, diligently tried to get these documents in place. We thought we had an agreement to that effect last Wednesday and Thursday. And now we find that we do not. And so um, it makes the, this, uh, these documents from the probate court uh, not something we can go through at this point. And as a matter of fact, I suspect we're going to have to file some motion for reconsideration with the probate court 
to say uh, never mind for now uh, with it by the by the date of September 5 2016 uh, because it just hasn't happened despite our best efforts and so um, the best I can say is that uh, uh, if the board would like to authorize the manager to to sign these documents as accepted um, in, in the event that the other sewer documents can be agreed upon uh, that are not agreed upon at this time, uh, that could be something to enable this to perhaps go forward before the next board meeting. Um, but that's not clear. That's, I think, the best we can do on these, uh, con these conservation documents. And we've done everything we could to make, make sure this got done in a timely manner. Absolutely. Um, questions from the board? Well, do you want to pipe up now? Uh, well, let's have okay. the board pipe up. Regina? Well, do you think it's a good idea that we send these documents to... No, as a, yeah. matter, as a matter of fact, these, this, the, the documents I'm talking about at the moment are these... Yeah, uh, but should we these, even... Well, uh, you could authorize... The, the, on the documents, there's a place for the board to sign as accepting right. pursuant to the statute. Right. The first signature would actually be the Conservation Commission Chair okay. because it's actually... These are right. property interests that the Conservation Commission has already voted to accept. And so your approval to that would be needed. And uh, it would be uh, to authorize Fred to sign those, but only if and when uh, the deal goes through at all. So, so <clears throat> if the deal can be worked out with the sewer, th the next part of it, yes, then these would be fine. There's no, there's no objections to these whatsoever. Correct. So do you anticipate that negotiation will still go on about the sewer issue? I, I expect it will, yes. All right. Then I would be in favor of giving the town manager the option to sign it. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I'd like uh, you to address this hold harmless and indemnification agreement. Yes. Uh, when was this drafted? This document, uh, and could you please, please uh, explain uh, who drafted it, when it was drafted, when it was involved in the process for approval of this project, what agreements and assertions were made by the applicants, uh, what you were led to believe was going to transpire, and uh, specifically the entities that agreed to sign it, from the town manager, I'll be looking for information on, in an adverse scenario, if this private system fails, that everybody wants to develop a project in town about <coughs> tax revenue. If we have millions and millions of dollars of sewage problems, and we just went through a pipe scenario most recently down at the beach that we own, which we are facing that is unreconstructed. I'd like you to address an adverse scenario on that. Uh, and, but first I'd like to hear on the legal side in the planning process, the planning board, uh, and then I'd like to hear from the town manager, and then I'd like to reserve the right to uh, have further comments tonight. Thank you. Okay, uh, in, in answer to the question, uh, the planning board on February 3, 2016 approved the cornerstone at Hampton Development Town planner Jason Bishand is here, so you can uh, fill in if I leave something out. Uh, the cornerstone at Hampton Development, of the uh, Alzheimer's and Assisted Living Unit, is uh, but the first of several new projects that are projected to be served uh, by the same private sewer system that is located, uh, th uh, served for sewer purposes through a pipe that goes underneath Route 101 and is, uh, involves an entire system to the west of Route 101. Uh, this particular system is uh, depicted on a schematic uh, that was developed by the engineer for uh, Seacoast Crossroads Realty dated July 15, 2016. It depicts a number of parcels that feed into the same exact spot on Langdale Drive uh, where the town system be 
begins. And this is a system that the town itself did not develop. Uh, it is not something with which we are uh, intimately familiar with all the details of its construction. And nevertheless, it, it dumps uh, many thousands of gallons of sewage into our system and would continue to do so. And so one of the conditions of the approval by the planning board was the creation of a sewer association to serve this project and other parcels in the Liberty Lane area. And that would require the approval of the Department of Public Works and the town attorney. Along with that was a condition that there would be a hold harmless and indemnification agreement as prescribed by the town and to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds uh, relative to the sewer service for this project. And so um, what was done was in conjunction with the Department of Public Works, uh, Jennifer Hale especially uh, paid a lot of attention to this, uh, Assistant Director of Public Works, uh, to uh, develop approximately four or five documents that would all address this situation. And uh, these documents were worked through thoroughly from the town's point of view, uh, both from a legal standpoint and a practical standpoint. The idea being that uh, where this, all of these properties are dumping sewage into one spot uh, in the town system, uh, that they would be responsible to indemnify and hold the town harmless should anything go wrong. It's their system, and uh, we are not responsible for that. We did not build it. And so the hold harmless and indemnification agreement was, was designed and uh, was finally released uh, on July 1, 2016. Uh, approximately the same time as this board addressed the conservation easement situation. And uh, basically for the next month, uh, received very little comments uh, from uh, attorneys for the uh, developer, attorney Sorry. Then about the uh, first week in, in uh, August, the uh, review of these documents was turned over to attorney classes firm. And for a couple of more weeks, we received no no input, and then we receive, uh, start to receive uh, in the last two weeks, basically, some intensive comments about that. Um, we have held, in mass, we've held two meetings with uh, various uh, people from Public Works, the Assistant Town <coughs> Manager's Office, uh, my office, to go through these documents in detail uh, to try to deal with any objections and from our point of view to try to ensure that if anything goes wrong with this private system, the town of Hampton itself would not be responsible. That's our goal. And if we do not build a system, we should not be responsible for it. Uh, there, are, there are various aspects, nuances to this in that there are already existing properties that would uh, initially were proposed by the developers, by the uh, owner itself, to be part of an association, but then we were informed that the, there are existing people there that did not want to be part of it and were taken off. Uh, so we have had to deal with that situation. So uh, all of that led to negotiations that, as far as we were concerned, uh, were concluded at the end of last week. Thank you. So you're telling me that on February 3rd there was a meeting in minds between the applicant, the granting a body, the town planner, that there would be a hold harmless and indemnification agreement? Yes. Regarding the applicant and associated LLCs and property owners that are using and producing effluent in a private system that we know nothing about. We've never surveyed. We have no idea what the condition is. Uh, we're basically ignorant of it. There was a meeting of the minds that there would be an agreement. Subsequently, we, in response to Ms. Uh, Senator Stiles, to the applicant, to Abed Lamontagne, uh, to the applicant uh, themselves, when they've been represented here, negotiated in good faith on a hydrant. We negotiated in good faith on a easement regarding vehicles. We did it expeditiously. You did rapid planning with the executive staff here. 
you consume dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of command element time. And now, seven months post the meeting of the minds in the agreement for this whole harmless agreement, now you're informed. When were you informed that this was a no-go? Uh, that there were questions uh, last Friday. Last Friday. Now, I'm not going on town on a plane tonight. I'm, I'm staying here to do business, okay? Uh, technically, Thursday, Thursday evening. Um, and and I'm, not a, Thursday. I'm not a senator. Nobody's called me on this. Um, nobody's telephoned me. Nobody's emailed me. Uh, but this is serious business, and it doesn't pass muster. Uh, not for this board, not for this watch, because um, this does not appear to be anything that any board in any town uh, would tolerate. Uh, there was a negotiation. There was a meeting of the minds. There was an agreement. Uh, and now we come to the 11th hour, and we have acted as a board and a command element in a municipality and, and uh, lived up to the assertions that Senator Stiles uh, asserts that we should, and very proudly so. And now we come into the 11th hour where there's uh, a sewer system that's an orphan and nobody wants it. And the taxpayers who just went through a reevaluation in this town, uh, who uh, are upper middle class and middle class and working class. And uh, Cornerstone, let's be fair, has how many would you say? Do you represent Cornerstone? I don't. Okay. Cornerstone, if you do a little search, owns more than one. Uh, elderly facility? Several. Would that be fair to say? Because to say. Um, it looked like more than a baker's dozen on uh, my my quick perusal this evening here on the computer. But back to the point is it's the 11th hour. Um, <coughs> I object to the senator coming in at this, this meeting and uh, urging us to uh, do the right thing and approve this um, because we've done the deep study. Uh, we're not at the State House. We're in the town of Hampton. And uh, this doesn't pass muster. I don't support it. Uh, the board should not vote on it. Uh, Mark, I think, uh, was being gratuitous and uh, offering an option that we could let the town manager uh, approve this. This is not at the town manager level. This is at uh, um, the Board of Selectmen's level. Uh, this may go back to Superior Court, but certainly uh, nobody should support this uh, tonight. And if this thing goes south, and we want to hear from Mr. Welch about what can go south, with this effluent, with this responsibility. And uh, then I'd like to hear if there's anybody that's an applicant address um, what appears to be uh, negotiations that uh, we held in good faith and at the 11th hour uh, people are walking away. And that was the very premise, and one of the most important premises, that this application was approved. Thank you. Mr. Welch, if you, you may, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Sir, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> members of the board. Um, I think Mark's comments have been very clear. Um, there are a number of individual elements within this area that we're talking about. Um, as of Thursday night, we were informed that there was some question about the indemnification agreement and some question about whether or not uh, that could be properly insured. And I think that's always a legitimate question, but I, I have to tell you that um, in my 50 years or more in municipal government, uh, I've never seen anybody wait until almost five minutes of, of midnight uh, before the, 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 the bell tolls to decide whether or not they can they can try to find insurance. And we, I know that's very difficult. This kind of proposition is extremely <coughs> difficult. No one knows how the system is built. No one knows how it's all put together. Um, there are clay pipes involved in this, this system. Uh, God knows what's out there. We don't know because we haven't seen it all. Uh, the pumping stations need some work. Uh, that's been <coughs> on the list and, and work has been going on slowly on those pumping stations. Our biggest fear, and I think it's the fear of everybody, sh sh everyone in town should have, is the fact that this particular system is now some 30 years old or, or better. Um, it has not been, to our knowledge, cleaned every year. It has not been photo inspected. I think that's been done now. Um, it's made out of clay, a lot of it out of clay pipe, and maybe all of it out of clay pipe, uh, which is very bad. As you know, we have that through our system, and we're replacing it as soon as we can. Uh, this also, uh, in addition to the indemnification, uh, we've been notified that uh, the sole connection to our system, which is the uh, the west, um, 
main trunk line back to the sewer treatment plant, uh, that connection which goes under Route 101, uh, we've been told is ours. Uh, we haven't been able to find any records that say that, either with us, with the state of New Hampshire, or with the water precinct. Uh, if we look at what's going on out there, that line that runs underneath the uh, uh, Route 101 does not comply with state law. It does not comply with federal law. Uh, both the sewer and the water are on the same pipe, uh, which is a violation of current state statute. And I, I, and I have to say, to the best of my recollection, it could very well be that it was in violation of state statute when it was built. The regulations don't provide for that. I'll give you a good example. When Barron Road was built, uh, the state found out that the water and sewer lines in that general area were too close to each other. These are inches apart. Uh, there's a 15 foot, 10 to 15 foot reservation they have to be apart. The town was ordered, actually the developer was ordered to dig up that whole section of Exeter Road and relay those lines because they were too close together. These are this close together. Um, the line that's underneath there is a vitrified clay pipe that runs underneath uh, Route 101. Uh, it was pushed through this 36 inch pipe. You don't push vitrified clay pipe through. They may have done that on rollers. We don't know. Uh, there's no evidence on how it was done, but it's there. There's no evidence as to whether or not it's leaking or not. Um, and beside it, after that was put in, is a, we believe, a steel water main. Uh, and, we have, and that's been there for more than 30 or 40 years. These are all serious matters. Now, the developer uh, has indicated, or the owner has indicated to us through the association that uh, they want us to be fully responsible for all that. I have to tell you that the information I've seen indicates to me that it's not ours. And I would recommend against taking it under any conditions. Uh, I'm not sure that we should even move forward with this at this point. Uh, Mark I, if I may that, stop you right there and, and, and then uh, reserve your time. Uh, sure. Uh, I would like to see as a selectman uh, detailed communication uh, exactly when the email or telephone calls went through that, uh, and I don't have that. I have word of mouth. And we I can, would like that. I'd like the board to have that information. We can give uh, I'd like the chairman to have that, uh, whether it was a telephone call, yeah. whether it was an email, because we had, again, this meeting of the minds seven months ago. Yeah. We have a state senator coming in advocating that we approve this tonight. We have all the alarming news that you've discussed this. We've got a, a cornerstone, no pun intended, uh, for the approval of this document that now people are pushing back on. We have perhaps millions of dollars. We have perhaps illegal uh, sewer and water uh, juxtaposition in violation of federal law and state law. Uh, it, it's becoming more insane the more I hear. And I would like a detailed uh, um, uh, examination of the communications for the Board of Selectmen uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, and if I need a motion, I'll be happy to make that. <coughs> Just how far down in the 11th hour uh, that we've come to this, where people are backing away from the cornerstone of the agreement with the planning board uh, for this cornerstone project. Back to you, Mr. Uh, it's not only with the, with, the, with the planning board, the, the agreement also involves the Board of Sewer Commissioners and the Board of Selectmen, who are the Board of Sewer Commissioners. And without your consent on these documents, this facility can't be connected. That's just the way it is. Uh, until we had um, information on Thursday night that they believe this pipe going across 101 belongs to the town and they didn't want to have any responsibility for it in any, in any form, uh, we started investigating that pipe. And what we found, frankly, it scares me. Uh, there's just no reason that pipe should be there in its current condition. Uh, I asked Public Works today, I asked to talk to the director, and I said, given flows, the buildings that are out here, the projection of buildings to be built, is the 12-inch pipe running underneath that, through that 36-inch that, uh, uh, pipe that runs underneath the Route 101, is, is it sufficient in size to take all of the stress that's going to be put on it by all these buildings that are being put out there? And the, the answer is, we don't believe so. We believe that pipe is going to have to be replaced at some point in time. And I think that may be one of the motives behind saying that this belongs to the town. Uh, that there's been no indication of that until Thursday night. Um, and frankly, the information we found says it doesn't belong to us. And if somebody has some other information other than that that shows that, in fact, we signed for it, we own it, we, we installed it, then they should present that. 
but that's not what we're finding. And we've been to the state, we've looked at their records, we've been to the, uh, the water department, we've looked at their records. Um, if they don't want to do this facility, that's fine. That's their option. But my understanding is if this isn't done by September 1st, this option goes away. The entire thing that we're talking about here is Cornerstone, which is the elder care and Alzheimer care facility that this gentleman wants to build. And um, if it's not done by September 1st, his authorization for funding dries up. It's gone. Uh, there's no way to recover that except to renegotiate the entire thing and start from scratch. So this isn't going to happen by September 5th. It's just not possible to do that from what we can see, in which case I believe that if it hasn't happened by the 4th of September, the council should be authorized to notify the probate court and it should be asked for reconsideration to hold this off so that this is not continually held in limbo. Something has to happen here with the court. And in the meantime, we need to do further investigation. We will get you every piece of record that we have been given. It's probably going to be a stack this high of information that has come from uh, everybody associated with this. It's just not the owner and, and uh, the, the other people associated with the owner. It's also with the uh, Cornerstone people. Well, this, the salient being, and I don't, I don't want to uh, monopolize the time, the salient being is there was a, a meeting of the minds in February, seven months ago. Yeah. Uh, deadlines are deadlines. We all have deadlines. We're all adults here, and, we're, and many of us are business owners, uh, and many of us are professional business owners in this town. Uh, and seven months later, now, um, other people's deadlines are not the responsibilities of the citizens of Hampton no. and the taxpayers of Hampton. Those are two mutually exclusive issues. And uh, what I'm consider what I'm interested in is not boatloads of information. I'm interested in when we realize that applicants or uh, those that are, have a financial interest in it or a promise that would uh, agree to that whole harmless agreement, when the town was notified that they were walking away from that. Thursday that's, night. That's really quite simple, and I would like to see that email or that phone record or the yep. documentation. And I do not support moving this project uh, despite the senator's uh, uh, exhortations this evening one centimeter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Gina? Yeah, after, I mean, I don't think that we should support anything right now. I think that, Mark, if you need to file a motion for reconsideration, as far as the conservation easement goes, I think we should do that. And if it's meant to be and, you know, they decide to agree what they said they were going to agree to, then that's one thing. But I think we just got to make it clear that we did what we could. We're definitely for pro-business, but we can't risk, we can't risk this to the town. And we can't take on another pipe that is not ours and that is probably going to fail, it sounds like. Jim? Just a couple of points. <clears throat> I'm going to agree with uh, Selectman Bean and I'm going to disagree with Selectman Bean. The Senator came in and asked us to consider the decision. Right. Didn't come in and say approve. So I think that's important that everybody realize that. It was not coming in saying approve, said listen to what's said and make a decision. So I think that's very important that we do that. The other thing is I'd like to hear from all sides before we make a decision on anything. I'd like to hear what everybody has to say. We've got the public works here. We have the lawyer for the other side here. So I would like to hear everything, and then I would like to make a, you know, <coughs> have a discussion on what we're going I to do. I agree. Talk. We need to hear from all sides. One thing I, I, I was looking at, and we're looking at this December 5th date that we have to file by. That's Labor Day. So yep. do we have to do that by the 2nd, which is Friday? Yes. So we have, we have, it's actually not the 5th we have to do that, it's by September 2nd. It, it right. could conceivably, the court could continue that on to the 6th, given that Monday is a holiday. Right. Usually we, that's... Uh, that, so they will continue it on to the 6th? I believe that's true. I just want to make sure that we know that and, and we're up front with that. That's. I, I would, however, not take the chance. I would want to inform <clears throat> the court of the status of this by some pleading to be filed Friday. Friday, okay. So, go thank ahead. You, thank you, Mr. Chair. First, tell us who you represent. I, so that's, I, think, that that's, I think that's a clear piece, yeah. Okay. So, so Michael Class, I'm an associate of Ovid LaMontagne. I was here a couple of weeks ago on the, the probate piece. Um, and Ovid has the unfortunate um, schedule of being on vacation today. So, so I, I get to appear, appear before you. Um, I concur that there's been a tremendous amount of work in this. My office was retained on August 4th. Um, I can't really speak to what happened before that, and we were retained. We represent asset title and um, Seacoast Realty. 
So they currently own several of the properties in this area. We do not, I do not represent um, the applicant who is Cornerstone, um, and there's also a, a hotel in that area. I, I don't represent those parties, just to be clear. So we represent some of the, the owners of property, and that property would be part <coughs> of the uh, association. So it would be encumbered by these association documents. Um, Thank you, sir. So, so it's clear that this is an exceptionally complex project. There's a bunch of moving pieces. Um, and I think we're sort of, you know, we started off this conversation with the, the probate deeds and then we moved to the sewer, sewer documents. I, I think they're somewhat separate. I think that the, the, the easement documents, but for them being a part of this bigger deal, I think that there's no real dispute about, just, just for the record. Um, I, I do not believe that there was a meeting of the minds with respect to the, the planning board approval. Um, that approval was a conditional approval. It was granted to Cornerstone. And again, this was before I was involved. I wasn't involved in the permitting, so I speak only about what I know. So I'd ask for a little bit of a understanding there. But I'm looking at a copy of that decision. One of the conditions was a hold harmless and indemnification agreement. This is condition nine. As prescribed by the town and to be recorded at the registry of deeds shall be provided relative to the sewer service for this project. So. So that was one of the conditions of the Cornerstone project. Um, what's, what this document, this hold harmless document that was provided to you, that is now a hold harmless and indemnification document for the entire public system, or excuse me, private system. Um, and that's one of, um, one of the concerns of my client who, who's required to sign on to this. Um, right now there's no indemnification out there. And, and the town's requesting full indemnification as to the whole system as part of these permits. Um, one concern is that this document is jointly and severably binding on the owners. Um, I believe the intent was to uh, bind the association. Part of the, part of the requirement of the association is a, a bond, a capital improvement bond that can be called on if something happens. Um, but one of my client's concerns is that this actually attaches to the individual members, which is, I think, contrary to the intent. Um, I personally met with various members of the town, including the manager, town council, um, Ms. Hale, and Mr. Jacobs, uh, and some others on, on Tuesday. We went through these documents, which have been a long time in the motion. As I said, we inherited them on August 4th. They had their own inertia at that point. We did our best to, to work with everybody on them. I think everybody's been working in absolute good faith, and I thank the town very, very much for all of the work they've done. Um, I know that Mark and I talk to each other probably too frequently. Um, I've had several conference calls with everybody. So, so I don't think that this is any sort of, everybody's been working in good faith. This is an exceptionally complicated project. This is an exceptionally complex piece of property because there is existing infrastructure and existing uses out there. So it's hard to figure out how to um, bring on these new uses in a fair and equitable way that protects both the prior owners, the prior users, and as well as the town. And I think everybody's, um, everybody has a legitimate interest there. So, so that said, on Tuesday we met, we reviewed the current form of the documents. I specifically stated that these were incumbent upon my clients who the owners review and approval. I said that on Tuesday. Um, on Thursday, and, and I said I was sp speaking with them on Thursday. We met on Thursday. They had some concerns that I relayed to, um, I have a copy of the email here. It was sent at 5.56. I was working on this much of the day. Um, I sent it, it's captioned to Mark, and it's copied several other folks, several other attorneys, and I identified the three concerns that were identified in that phone call. So uh, I just want to be clear that these sewer documents are a completely separate animal than the condition of the cornerstone permit. Um, they're related, obviously, but there was no meeting of the minds as to these sewer documents. The fact that folks wanted an agreement and we, you know, we believe we're close and frankly I still think we're close despite hiccups here and there. Um, there was, there was no meeting of the minds. There was no misrepresentations by me, I don't believe. And obviously there's parties here that can speak otherwise, but I just want to make that exceptionally clear for the record. Um, as to the, so, so, so the, um, 
The indemnification slash joint and several liability, that's one of the three main concerns. The other main concern, is, as Mr. Welch pointed out, was the, the, the origins of this span that go under 101. Um, we've, we've reached out, I believe that the, our engineers have been in pretty constant communication with the DPW, trying to figure out the origin of that, um, the history of that, who put it in. There's really no information on it. Um, my client's vague recollection is that the town uh, required that to be put in because it, it's under public land 101. And so the private entity is unlikely to be allowed to, to go do that. Um, I understand that there might be something, the, the town received something from the DOT, I think, on Friday. I've asked for a copy of that. I haven't seen it. Um, but we, we just frankly don't know about that. Um, and, and, and so I just want to sort of um, make it clear that it's not, you know, this isn't a, a case where this is a <laughs> sharp and crystallized set of facts as 30 years ago. This is exactly what happened. I mean, the parties have been reviewing this, trying to figure out up into and including, you know, today. So, so you know, we're not trying to hide the ball. We're not trying to step back at the last second. Um, you know, we've always been, we've done, I think everybody's done their best to make these these time deadlines for, for the, the permittee. Um, and, and, you know, we are where we are, despite the best efforts of everybody involved. Um, you know, hey, for Mr. Chairman, just a second. Hey, Mike, sure. I just wanted to ask you if, if, if I can call you Mike, but. Please do. Um, what, what are we looking at? Um, the whole harmless and indemnification agreement. Yes, sir. And you say at the 11th, you, you emailed um, uh, Mark, if I can call you Mark, um, on the 25th. I know you work late, and I know you're working hard, and everybody's worked hard on this. But this hold harmless and indemnification agreement um, that was produced seven months ago? It was produced uh, July 1. July 1, which is two months ago. Um, it specifically talks um, about the Liberty Lane Sewer Association, and that includes, if I may, for details so the public can hear this, yeah. the AG Hampton Hospitality LLC, the Asset Title Holding LLC. It talks about the Asset Holding Company LLC, Cornerstone at Hampton Assisted Living LLC, Seacoast Crossroads Realty Company LLC, and the Seacoast Crossroads Realty Company LLC. Is that correct, Esquire? Yes. Okay, so that, this is two months old. And then we get down to the 25th after hours. Was the 25th of... Thursday. 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 Thursday, summertime. A lot of people aren't working Fridays, and so we, we come in Monday. But you know, this is this isn't this is very clear. It's not nebulous. The whole association was involved with it. This was on the street, and again, I would assert from from my limited knowledge um, um, that this is a meeting of the minds. I don't think uh, Attorney Gerald produces documents like this on a whim or something that he just thinks. Well, maybe they talked about this. I think. I think Attorney Gerald, who's a very fine attorney, had a real good sight picture on this, and that he drafted this document, and that it uh, was a meeting of the minds. Because that's the quality of work that I have reviewed from him for four and a half years. So I would, I would just respectfully interject that now, and thank you for the uh, insertion of my comments. And, and, and I'll equally <clears throat> respectfully just push back a little. I mean, there, there was no, the, these, are, these, are, these are in very good form, right? These could be, the, the intent was for you folks to, to review and approve them if everybody agreed. So, so, but these are evolved documents that have gone back and forth. And I just want to be very clear for the record that, that my clients never signed off on this. Me, you know, our firm negotiating with the town and all these other folks, you know, being part of this. Sorry? Yeah, no, I just, I'm, I'm, I just wanted, it's, it seemed to be a cloud, but to me, it just seems that there's an agreement. It's I mean, I, I guess ask, ask days. attorney, you know, ask town council and the manager. I mean, on, on Tuesday, did I, be, you know, was it clear that this was subject to, the, and this is rhetorical, I'm not trying to go here. I, I'm just trying to make it clear that I don't believe there was a meeting of the minds. These are always sort of documents that are in motion, and, and you know, especially as to this Exhibit A, which I believe you read off the, the owners to. Mm -hmm. You know, one of, one of those, you know, we identified even on Friday that one of these owners, I think, slipped through that shouldn't be part of this. So, you know, and, and for example, um, you, you know, these are, these are in good form, but there was no meeting of the minds. That's, I guess that's, that's my position, and, and I, you know. Okay. So, and, and I think I was, I was essentially done. Um, you know, I, I think that the two main issues here are the, you know, the 101 span and the indemnity. Well, um, we had gone back and forth on a number of versions, and um, 
I'm, I'm not faulting you personally for the, the place we're at. Uh, having gone through back and forth versions, we, we assume that the positions you're taking and the changes you wanted made were authorized changes so that we would not be in the situation of on a Thursday evening we would suddenly hear that the client isn't happy with them. That's a big jolt and it has been to all of us who worked very hard on it. We were fully expecting and put this on the agenda tonight for, for board approval in anticipation that we would not hear what we heard on a Thursday because the agenda is basically set on a Wednesday. Uh, okay. I think everybody wanted there to be a deal. You know, I, I worked, I worked, you know, <laughs> I almost had to pardon my French there. I worked my butt off, you know, for two, two weeks on this, and Mark did too. And, and there just wasn't a deal. You know, we were getting it in the form for final approvals, and, you know, it is where it is. And there's business considerations that are separate from legal considerations. Um, and ultimately, you know, in the current form, these documents, you know, my client's not willing to sign the documents. Yeah. So I, I, I think that uh, the content of the email you're referring to, Mr. Bean, uh, reflects some fundamental problems with the acceptance of evaluation of the system, questioning whether or not the, the town is responsible for that pipe that went under the sewer system. That's a big, a big item. It's not a small concern. And we didn't, oh, sorry, Mark, I didn't mean Go ahead. That. I was gonna say that came out during a call with a client. You know, th this, the folks on this, the, the folks with history here are few and far between. There's no documentation at the town level. I haven't seen any at the state level. So, you know, speaking with client, it's his vague recollection that because this was 101, there's no easement rights here. No one's found any easement rights. Um, so that's, you know, that's how this, that's how, that's how, why we are where we are. Um, and I don't necessarily want to. I'm happy to talk about it as much as you want. I don't necessarily want to dwell on it. I guess what I'd like to do when we get to the appropriate point is try to figure out how to move forward in as productively as possible. Um, well, I guess the only thing I've got to add to this is that, and I was alpha pa this time because I was undergone, undergone surgery, but uh, this has been in the hands of your clients, not necessarily with you present, uh, since July. And this is the first time we've heard a problem. And you don't do that. Business people don't do that. If there was a problem, it should have been coughed up in July. Not now, not the beginning of September, when, when, when the person this was all being done for is now going to lose their, their business and, and going to lose their building and going to lose their financing. That's just the wrong sloppy way to do this. I have to tell you, that in my opinion, this was incompetently handled somewhere. And I know it wasn't on the town side because we've been pushing, 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 pushing consistently to get this done because we want this facility built. It's not gonna happen. And that's by, that's that's obviously what, what's on the face of this here. There's no reason why this could not have been completed in July. And here we are you know, a couple of days from the end of the entire process when this, this poor guy's going to lose his building, and it isn't finished yet because someone's thrown a class one monkey wrench into the works. These problems could have been brought up by the owners of the property months ago. Wasn't done. All of a sudden, we're very close to a deal, and then we get three or four giant monkey wrenches thrown into the works. Just not effective. It's a poor relationship. And I have a feeling it's going to continue because I just don't see an end to this uh, without some divine <coughs> intervention. And that's what it's going to take, divine intervention. Basically, the owner wants us to take responsibility for something that was done by somebody else, and he wants the taxpayers to pay the bill. And my advice to you is don't do it. Jim? I, I agree with what you're saying, but I also agree that... If there's a way to make it work, with them taking responsibility, I mean, if we have a stand, we have a stand, we're going to stand on it. They have a stand. So if there can still be some negotiations to the last minute, I have no problem with negotiations going to the last minute. I don't, I don't see just coming in negatively saying this isn't going to happen, this can't work. I don't see that as being, I mean, I, I know what you're saying, and I know it, but it just if there's still an option to get there somehow that will serve us that we can agree to, I see no reason with saying, okay, somebody screwed up, somebody was sloppy, 
but that doesn't mean you, you just throw the whole thing <coughs> out the window and you have Cornerstone go down to get on the tubes. I, d I don't think that that's, you know, you know, I don't think that's right. I think I think you work through it until the very end. I don't think we accept anything that we don't want to accept. I don't think we go any place that we don't need to be. But I don't I don't cut off negotiations until yeah, the, the so last minute. Certainly, we haven't done that. And, and I would uh, I would characterize uh, um, your assertions of negatively. I don't think you, you mean that about any comments anybody said here, because they're just factual and they're realistic, and we are, we are positively. Uh, reinforcing uh, our responsibilities and duties as leaders of the citizens and taxpayers of Hampton, and we're, we're positively reinforcing their financial interest and those that apply and conduct commerce while we live here uh, and our children are schooled here. Um, they conduct commerce and make money here, and we're all for that. But uh, those are business pursuits, and we are positively, uh, not negatively, reinforcing uh, the town of Hampton. I would just I would just share that with you, Jim. I, I agree 100 percent. Okay. I don't cut if anything off until the last minute. My only th thinking is, when is the last minute? We're already here at, at August 29th. The last minute is the 31st at 2 o'clock. That's the day on which uh, the Cornerstone facility has their hearing before the planning board, pre-construction meeting, okay? If they can't get that pre-construction meeting done, there is no building. That's the bottom line. And this is our last meeting between now and then. That is correct. Mr. Manager, may, may I ask a question to sure. follow up on that? Yep. So the pre-construction meeting? We've scheduled it because we anticipated after working with everybody sure. that we would be here tonight to sign these documents, or the board would be. And so we scheduled that so they wouldn't lose their funding on September 1st. Okay. If so that, that doesn't happen by the 31st. This isn't put together by the 31st. That facility will not be built. <coughs> Uh, I hear what you're saying, and then if if there was that affects all the other facilities that have been approved, in theory, by the subdivisions for the condominiums on that same piece of property, because this this is going to kill them too. Um, I hear what you're saying. So so if I'm hearing you right, the the driving factor here is the financing com the financing component, and not necessarily. I mean, if it was necessary and appropriate, could the pre-construction meeting be continued? I mean, that, is that a, what's the they have to commit by September 1, which is the following day. But, but that's on the bank side, right? I understand that, but if you don't have any money, you're not going to build anything. No, I understand that's, that too, well, but I guess I, I guess I don't represent them, and I hear what you're saying, but um, I, I agree that we should – this is exceptionally complex. The way that I is. like to look at these is to try to digest it in little pieces, because sometimes you can get assume, you know, subsumed by the whole piece. <laughs> so I think that – without speaking for anybody. I think that the probate piece we've pretty much dealt with. It's contingent on the whole deal, but you know that's at least one box that we yeah. can check on. Right. Um, I guess if we can work on the sewer documents and get those resolved and, and as fast as we you know as fast as we can and, and do everything we can such that we put everybody in the, the best position they can be in, then I'm, that's all we can do, right? Well, and I'm not sure we can do that. I okay. mean if, if, if but, I, but I guess what I don't want to do is, is with, with what you just said in mind, I don't want to just sort of like stop the conversation this evening. Well, I, the conversation is going to stop. We have until the 31st at 2 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Uh, the problem is that unless the folks who, who are on the other side are going to, in fact, say, all right, yeah, that's our pipe. We installed it or we had somebody install it. Somebody is, was in the town. We know that. Um, and, and we're going to take responsibility for it. If you're not going to do that, then the recommendation from Public Works, the recommendation from my office, the recommendation from council is this is a dead deal. Yeah. Because it just isn't going to move forward. Well, is there a way for, for this board this evening to make um, recommendations on those documents, sort of contingencies, and then, and then if we can work to resolve those between now and the next meeting, then they would sort of be felt self effectuating? I mean, if this board said, uh, I don't even want to speak for, for the board, but do you understand what I'm saying? Sort of like contingent, contingent approvals? I know what you're saying, but we don't meet again for two weeks. Yeah. And yeah, this is going to be way past the deadline for the developer. But can, can, is there a way to delegate the authority to, with certain conditions met as met by this board? We do, we're, if I may, Mr. Chairman, we're in some rapid staff planning here, and uh, you know, we're not going to war. 
You get no. some somebody's left this ball on the court unattended um, for 60 days, and uh, we're not going to jeopardize the town. This is my opinion, Mr. Chairman, and uh, start doing contingencies and commit and put uh, put words on the record that people can uh, um, uh, come back at us with at this now the 12th hour. It's midnight. Um, uh, people are starting to turn into a pumpkin. And uh, there's a hold harmless agreement. And if people uh, are members of an LLC that are no longer part of that association, then strike it. Uh, provide the uh, risk management documentation by the sewer system. Uh, come up with a document that you will uh, um, agree to with the town manager that protects the interests and the spirit and the exact uh, vocabulary that people use tonight and do the deal. Uh, nursing homes make a lot of money. There's a lot of old people, and they're going to make a lot of money, for, and, and, and I'm an old person, and uh, um, they're going to make a lot of money for a lot of years, and uh, you know, sometimes you have to pay a little more than you think you're going to have to to get in the door. And, and it again, looks, that's, it looks that's like that's where that's at. And I know you don't represent them, but you're going to be talking to them. No, and I but just, we're not making any, any, at least I'm not going to be part. The town manager said no. Town council has said no. Uh, Regina said no. I've said no. I'm sure if we bring up Public Works, they'll say no. I'm sure if we bring up the planner, they'll say no. Uh, and we can talk on light, but I'm not prepared to make any I agreement. just want to say one thing. I would, Jim, I would love if there was a way to negotiate this and get it to be what they want and what we want. I think the facility would be great. The additional facilities would be great. But, it, I mean, these documents were put together for the protection of the town. And if they're not, you know, agreed to as is, like you said, 12th, 13th hours tomorrow. Right. The only thing is they could still agree to these. I mean, we're going to hold our, our position. Basically. Yeah. We got our position held. Right. Bang. Right. If he goes back to his people and says they'll accept that, why stop it? Well, we won't. There's a deadline, and uh, we meet again. We have an emergency meeting, and we post it, and we come in, and we meet, and we approve it. But there's, there's, in my mind, well, that's what I mean. Just mind. don't. I'm happy to do that. No one's saying no, but we already have an agreement. Well, that's what I heard. I heard no. Can uh, can we hear from the public works director? Sure. He's sitting back there. Mm -hmm. Who me? Mm -hmm. no, you heard no with the current documents, the okay. current changes. I can hear you over there. That's it. They don't look off and let me stand here, so <laughs> <laughs> lucky you. There's a heat on those seats, so must have. Um, <coughs> we have been working with um, Cornerstone and Asset Holding. Is it Asset? Is it asset Title. Asset Title, who owns, if you will, the Wheel Liberator Complex. Um, ever since the very first meeting that we had with the, uh, the Cornerstone people in the uh, in our uh, plan review process, and also I can remember meeting with OPG Construction representing the hotel developer. In both instances, I can remember clearly stating to them is we're entering new territory here, and we're going to need to draw up agreements because this is a private system that I have no control over, no responsibility to as a town, but the EPA holds me responsible if there's an overflow, if there's a discharge, if there's a failure of one of the lines. Um, also, after having gone through what we did with the force main, I can only envision what I might go through with this. And, and the other reason for asking for these documents that that, to be honest with you, Mark has pushed very, very hard uh, to get them into some, um, into a final form long before uh, Mike is it? Yes, sir. came into the process. Uh, matter of fact, I think he and I, for one of the few times, actually had words about, you know, who's on first, what's on second. My work wasn't getting done, but Cornerstone's was. Uh, we, we've, we got through it. We work out these things. Um, and I, I personally like the way the legal documents are prepared as a whole, excepting for two points. One, we feel, and my information shows, that the line that runs under 101 is part of their service connection. And as the sewer commissioners, you realize that the, with everyone in town, that service line, if it comes from your house, to our service main is yours literally till it gets to the edge of the street. Um, 
as far as, as repairing it, and then it is still yours all the way to the main. But at that point, you have to deal with us. Um, prior to that, you can repair the work on your own property. So we've always contended that that's, that's the, real, the real deal. As a matter of fact, the documents have, have been specifically the whole harmless and all the other agreements have been put together uh, that talk about the collection system through the sewer manhole zero and including under Route 101 that we that w it is not our system. Um, some of the system, sewer system out here has been built with clay pipe. Some of it's been built with PVC. Um, I went on the understanding with um, Corey Caldwell from MSC when he said he was out here and inspected it all, that it was all built to specs. We still had Wright Pierce, our engineers, look at the pump stations and things are not up to what the standard that the state would hold me to, i.e. security fence around the pump stations, there's no after all cow after our call numbers, there's no emergency alarm system uh, to notify anybody, there's, um, there's not even a backup generator. So these were all deficiencies we pointed out to them and they said, yeah, great, those, those, and they've agreed to, to take those on. They even agreed to, uh, I asked for 10% um, funding, tell us what the value of your present worth value of your system is, put 10% into the, into the agreement. We met with Ovid, um, two weeks ago, and one of the points that he brought up was, geez, we really have uh, a problem with coming up to 10% of that value, like right from day one. Okay, fine. As you work on, Cornerstone isn't gonna open for 14 months, <coughs> so we tied that to uh, Cornerstone's opening. My point in telling you that is, we've been working with them. We've gone back and forth. I bet I've been involved in 10 meetings alone, just on these documents. We were kind of surprised, and, and Mike was not, with respect to Mike, he was not involved in the project until August 4th. But from early July, all the month of July, we never heard back from anybody. Mark and I, in a number of instances, said, this is weird. Uh, they just took the documents in whole, and there's been, there was no feedback. So that's the month we lost. That's when, the, as you say, the ball was left on the court. Nobody picked it up. It wasn't our ball to play with. It was theirs. It's their project. Um, Yes, Thursday afternoon, the word came down that they had a problem with ownership or responsibility for that sewer line underneath um, 101. In talking to Corey today, the problem he has with it is the same problem I have. It was built with vitrified clay pipe. It was installed in this. They basically put a 36-inch pipe in the ground, put the sewer in, filled it around it with sand, and then cored through it in the same 36 inch pipe and put in the water line. We don't do that. We in the same pipe? In the same pipe. Water and sewer in the same pipe? Same pipe. Do not do it, period. Nada. It's, it, the state rules do not allow that at all. Put on, I guess, on your own private service, if you can get away with it, but you won't on a town system at all, period. 10 feet's the minimum. And when we cross one over the other, going opposite directions, most of the times we encase the water pipe in, uh, in concrete so that there's no potential for sewer effluent and potable water, drinking water to mix. That's the length we go to. Um, what I found at the state is um, as far back as July 12th, 1977, it showed those water and sewer lines in the same location for this Wheeler Brader Fry project all the way back then. And and repeatedly all the way up through, it shows that their sewer lines. So much so that when in 1986, this town underwent the uh, Exeter Road relief sewer where we put in a sewer in the woods, parallel to Exeter Road, but way downhill to pick up everybody, driftwood, maple wood, Langdale all the way down. Um, that plan didn't go under 101. Matter of fact, it went about 30 feet towards their sewer, picked up their line, done. End of story. And at one time, there was a pump station down at the end of Langdale to service their prop project and everybody in Langdale. And that's what this Exeter Road 
relief sewer replaced. So we picked up where we need to pick up within our right-of-way, but this is their service line under 101. It happens just to be a real long one. So if they would agree to, yeah, that's theirs, to take it on, and at some point it's going to have to be replaced, and minor modification to the uh, agreement that they take responsibility for everything on their side right now, period, um, there's a difference in the opinion of, well, part of it's owned by asset title and part of it's open to everybody else. Yeah, okay, fine. But somebody needs to take responsibility for all. Those two minor things worked over. Call me tomorrow morning and tell me their side agreed to it. We're good and golden on our side. But that's, it's, it's that risk and liability of that section under 101 that's the major issue. After what I've been through with the town with respect to the uh, force main, that is not the kind of project that we can or should inherit fiscally or if I do it for this project, I'd have to do it for some other project and I don't see it. It's not ours. That's my opinion. May I ask a quick question as to the, Mr. Chair, sorry, uh, don't mean to speak out of order. Um, the second point, um, 101 was the first point. The second point was responsibility of the whole system. Do you recall what document? Can you tell me a little bit more about what your thoughts were there? We were talking about it this afternoon, how the main line that goes from your Liberty One building. Yeah, so that's the existing gravity that goes down to zero. We're saying as other people attach to it, lots two and three to yeah. either side, that that then becomes part of the Okay. Association. So, so as it stands, it wouldn't be part of the association because it's not servicing an association use. But as soon as somebody else is in on that, then they become part of the association. Yep. All are part of that line. Okay. Yeah. And and the new users, not the, the existing users. user. Right. Okay. Not not the Liberty Lane building one. But we are not responsible for that at any point right now, anyways. No. Correct. But what the difference of opinion is there's there is currently a sewer association that asset title put together. And it only covers some of the lots. They created new lots this year as part of a condominium conversion. Those new lots are not covered by the old agreement. <clears throat> this new agreement does cover them, but what we're saying is, even though <laughs> that old line is covered by the old agreement, as other people are gonna tap into it, we feel they will because it goes across their lots, proposed lots. They should, the new agreement should encompass that particular, uh, this new agreement. That's all. Those, those are our differences. They're not that far apart, <coughs> as I say. It's, uh, and I, and I understand from their side, the, they finally recognized the liability that we recognized six months ago. But I can't and don't want to do it. I did offer to Ovid, you know, you want to give us $2 million, and that was a wild guess. I'll take over the whole system, but I'm going to rebuild it, starting from one, but you pointing up the money. But that's, that's probably a very far-fetched thing to happen. So, any questions? Any questions? Well, yeah, you know, that's far-fetched, but uh, the status of... Uh, uh, the negotiations now is that the uh, Hampton taxpayers would, uh, in the event of a, uh, uh, a calamity, um, pony up that money. Right. So we So much so that tomorrow morning we're going to go pop the manhole and make sure that there's no I and I when there's zero flow at 6 o'clock. It should be zero flow at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, to make sure that the, the water line and the sewer line aren't already broken. We don't know. That was my question. That was going to be part of their requirements would have been to investigate all that and to assure the town prior to the issuance of the CO for the Cornerstone project. So if there are problems that are found, the agreements call for all those things to be remedied. I was resting arm. Oh, okay. It's, when we're done, I might have a suggestion, but. All right. Well, any, any other comments from the board? I have nothing. So I hear what the board's saying on the 101 span. Like, no, right? Um, can the board discuss for a second the, the, hold, hemless, the hold harmless and indemnification document? Uh, and 
clarify for me if it's intended to attach to all of the owners in a joint and several manner in addition to the association? Because my intent was always to have it, you know, if something happens to the system that the town needs to call on, they would call on the association. Um, and part of the association, you know, the town would have the assurances of the bond slash capital reserve to, to demonstrate that it had the liquidity to be a viable entity in case of something. I will tell you this, and uh, Mark certainly can uh, um, talk about joint and several liability, but, uh, you know, associations can go bankrupt. They can do uh, anything they want to do and uh, maneuver out of things. And if you're going for uh, a commercial note in this town and you're going to see a banker, they're going to uh, tell you have 10 ways to Sunday. And uh, I would recommend that's exactly uh, what the town does uh, in this pursuit as well. Mark, you got anything to say on that? Yeah, I, I, um, the security of this has been something that the uh, Public Works Director has been acutely aware of, and uh, Chris and I will have to talk about that because uh, they've not been willing to have the money be put into the association right away, and uh, but are offering a bond that we have not yet seen. So it's hard for me to gauge whether or not if it's just the association with an unseen bond that's, that's sufficient for us to rely upon. And does the town have bonds, the sample bonds? I mean, I, I believe I, I'm happy to take a form to my folks. I don't think it exists. So We have construction bonds that we, we've been shown. But again, the onus is uh, this is, it was a suggestion on the part of your client. Uh, through Attorney Lamontagne, that the bond that a bond be shown, and and we've we're, we've been waiting to see it. Well, it's been it's you know it's the insurance company. You know we've got several feelers out to insurance folks. One of the questions is the liability riders that were discussed, and the other one is the bond. So as soon as we have any sort of information for y'all, we'll send it to you. Um, we don't have that right now. The the, pro the problem is, of course. Can Seacoast Crossroads, I mean, sorry, can corner, the Cornerstone project go forward awaiting these kind of details? That's the problem. We, we've, been, we've, been, we've been rushing to try to get these documents done so that this could be started September 1. Uh, apparently, it's not going to happen. And uh, it's just very frustrating. I think <coughs> you can see the frustration. We have a senator coming who says, uh, we want to be business friendly, and we've been really trying. The details were not ours to to uh, to generate. The bond is is uh, coming from your end, and uh, it's just very frustrating. Anything else? Nope. I think you, uh, I guess, sum up sort of. That you need to go back to your principles and tell them that uh, what the board has said. And I gather the same thing you did, that uh, the piece under 101 is a, is a no-go. I don't mean to speak for anybody. No, no, I understand, but I, I think you interpreted it correctly. Um, and I, I, the rest of it, you know, we're able to <coughs> work on what's there. But basically what you're telling us in your email is that you're dubious about whether or not you can even acquire the insurance. That's something well, that has not been finished yet. Well, I mean, think think about it in this way. I mean, there's an insurance requirement. Nobody looked into it yet for whatever reason. So doesn't it make sense to figure out that it's either insurable or not? Then where are we? So, I, you know, I understand we are where we are, and it's frustrating. And believe me, I'm, you know. Well, see, I look at it from a different, a different standpoint, and that is that basically you've had this since the 1st of July. Somebody should have started looking at it at the first of July, and we'd have an answer now. And, and it just can't, didn't happen. Well, I can't I, you tell weren't you weren't there. And no, no. And I don't mean to. I'll use that excuse all night. But <laughs> I know you weren't. There. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking to that. I mean, this document did evolve, so I don't know when necessarily that insurance piece came into being. There's there's a chance it came into being two or three weeks ago. Um, it's you know we still we are where we are, but I guess I just don't you know I don't want to make it seem like. You know, we've been working on this very diligently in good faith, and so I'll just leave it at that. Um, I'm happy to go chat with my people. I, I want to do whatever I can this evening to sort of facilitate it. There was a comment about a special meeting. Um, 
what is, is that? Well, that's, that's the chairman's prerogative, but I, I will tell you, uh, is, is Mark said he's disappointed. We were all disappointed and, and quite frankly, yeah. vehemently surprised when the news of your email hit the street to our office and to the elected board on Friday because we have been so supportive of this and it's a great project. And it, it's a wonderful project. No, it's a fantastic and, and, and nobody can argue with the concerns that the elected officials in the town have and the public works director and the planner and the town manager and the town esquire have for protecting the rights of citizens. And we don't we don't uh, make those subordinate to business interests or banking uh, considerations or deadlines that are in the private sector. Our, our priority is to that. So um, the, our position, I think, if we speak, is there's um, uh, the letter of the law, there's federal regulations, there's, there's state regulations and we're not going to eat those and this project may be just a little bit more expensive in terms of being capitalized by the purchaser by this entity by these folks uh, than they thought and it's probably if you do it on a percentage wise and you amortize it well it's real money not much more expensive um, to do it right uh, and protect the town and be a good corporate citizen uh, and uh, pony up right from the get -go. So, what I say. so how does that relate to the uh, special meeting? Well, is that is that something that the board would be? I guess I'd like to be able to, you know, we're dealing with some expedited timelines here that aren't you can ideal. Call a me, special meeting at any time, correct? Twenty-four hours notice. Twenty-four hours notice. So he know you know our position. <laughs> yeah, no, I, thank you, Jim. You know our position. So he comes back, says they'll meet every condition we're talking about. So if he, he, he does that and comes back by then you have tomorrow. To call for a special meeting, but if, not negotiating. I mean, we've made our position well, clear. And I just want to be very clear. I mean, there are a couple, town council is there are a couple of minor edits, such as the lot on Exhibit A, some, some what I would deem insignificant. I mean, are those still, are we able to discuss those? I would expect so. Okay. So. What if? He, if he can get back to us by tomorrow at what time was the meeting on Wednesday? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. So if you get back to us by Two tomorrow at. Oh, oh, yeah. The pre construction meeting is scheduled to tomorrow. I mean, Wednesday at 2 o'clock, 31st. So we will know by the, by 3 o'clock whether they've. I expect you will. So you can let us know by tomorrow at, two, at 3 o'clock. We can issue a. Emergency town meet or emergency special meeting for Wednesday at 3:30, four o'clock, however we want it to be. So uh, you got to get back to us by tomorrow by three. And I very much appreciate. I know this is uh, somewhat of a pain. Um, it's frustrating. I appreciate your time and your your courtesy, frankly. Um, Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Thanks, Mike. That's what? No, I think that's enough for tonight. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Next thing is since we are on to new business. I guess we're on a new business now, would you say? The NHMA, oh, and we've done the sewer uh, service agreement with Liberty. So now is the NHMA 2017-2018 legislative policy. So, Mr. Town Manager. Sir, you, you requested that uh, I put this on the agenda for this evening so that the board could discuss um, the proposals put forth by the H NHMA and uh, to select someone or some people to go okay. and, and, and uh, represent the town with this activity from the board. Okay. So, here you coffee. go. <laughs> I left mine at home, I think, with all this paperwork we get. So, first of all, do we have anybody that's interested in going to the... I, I wanted to go desperately, and I got... <laughs> and something came up that I have to go to that day. I want to go. So, um, we will have Regina represent us, which is great. I'm glad you're going. <laughs> and um, I went to the last one. Yep. And 
<laughs> what that most of the people did was their bo their boards had voted on the proposals to how they wanted and then gave the person the and we hadn't done that the last time okay so I just made up your minds thank you Joe <laughs> <laughs> and you did an excellent job by the way yeah so we have um, what, eight or ten proposals here yeah. uh, first one being uh, the New Hampshire to see if the NHMA will support the legislation to allow municipality library budgets to appear on a separate warrant article in a town meeting at SB2. You want to explain that? So that would that, that would take the if that legislation passed, that would take the library budget out of the town budget and put it on a warrant article. And why is that a good idea? Well. I guess it depends on how you look at it. The, the, the library trustees are considered to be the other board of selectmen in most towns. Uh, they are outside the control <laughs> of the board of selectmen, so they're sort of very independent according to the statute. Uh, they have their own resources. They're allowed to keep and have their own treasure and pay their own bills. Uh, they can hire their own employees. Uh, they can pay them. They can, they can negotiate with them. Um, they can do just about everything the board of selectmen can do. Um, and having worked in a number of different communities, I can tell you that, uh, as an example, one community uh, cut the budget uh, for the library, and uh, which which can happen because it was a recommendation of the budget committee, and the town passed it, and the follow the budget the uh, the library was not able to purchase books that year, no books, periodicals, newspapers, nothing, because they took all that money out. So the following year, the library petitioned the town uh, on a warrant article because. If it went into the budget, and the budget that following year was very large, so it defaulted, they would get nothing again for the second year. So the, once you do that, chances are very good that you're going to do it every single year if you have to. You can currently do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just that there has to be a budget for the library in the town budget. So if you don't want it there, you're going to have to have legislation to remove it. So your feelings? Uh, it's six of one and half a dozen of another. Um, people like to see it in the budget. They understand it there. Uh, it's pretty, library budgets don't change a lot uh, unless you're in capital, and then you're gonna have a warrant article for that. Um, it does deflate the size of the town budget, which also affects um, the default budget, no matter how you look at that. So if you, if you want to put it in the in the in the warrant article, and chances are that those libraries who do, and, and I've seen a few, they put special warrant articles in, and they end up supplementing their budget. Uh, maybe the whole thing should just be there, and, and they can explain it. And, and uh, I really don't think it makes a lot of difference. It's another point of argument and discussion. I support uh, maintaining the status quo, Mr. Chairman. I support giving our delegate the opportunity to listen to the discussion up there. And yeah, find out why they want it. Find out why. why. Maybe 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 go over and talk to the library director. And okay. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that, but knowing that I think from this this board, uh, and I'll speak for myself, I'm I'm not opposed to it. I don't know if I don't really know if I support it. You yeah, know, okay. it's, I, I, uh, you really need to have more information, and I think right now the way it works is okay. But I think that's what Mr. Bean's saying right now. The way I think it's important. I think it's great when um, uh, Amanda comes in and feels part of the team and that we don't start separating um, different uh, um, parts of the town. And I think that the library is such an integral part of this town that it, it deserves to be included uh, uh, right there with every other department. And it's equally important, and it's, uh, it, it should uh, rise to the attention that selectmen um, are deeply involved with the budget and the usage and the development of the library. And I, I support it uh, just the way it is, and I don't support any other option. So, you, so you, you're, you'd be opposed to this? Yes, I am. So she's I, she's a department head. She's treated that way. Exactly. Well, the other department. I don't heads. agree with. I don't disagree with Mr. Bean. So <clears throat> I, I don't either. oppose it. I don't agree so. with him. I don't disagree with him. So either. we'll oppose that one. Okay. Next one is to see if the NHA will support legislation to allow municipalities to borrow funds 
from either their special revenue funds or capital reserve funds for the purpose of financing municipal bidding construction and approval via warrant articles approved by their voters. I think that's a terrible <coughs> idea. It gives you the opportunity to go in and just strip accounts that are there that have been created by the voters without their vote. I think that's terrible. I just don't think that's right. The voters have created those accounts. They're there for very specific, specific purposes, and I don't think those funds should be used for anything else unless the voters approve it. I agree with the town manager. I agree I also. I do, too. This next one is... Did we ask Mr. Bean? Oh, I agree sorry. with you, Mr. I figured, I, I assume Mr. <laughs> Bean was right there with us. Yes, sir. But I shouldn't always assume. Um, check mark on the way. Yeah. <laughs> this next one is, and it's submitted kind of different, Yeah. by Christine Dreyer, members of the Ports and City Council and the Labor Legislative Subcommittee. They have. The Port City of Portsmouth Council approved this policy. Okay, yada, yada, yada to see if the NHMA will support legislation that amends RSA 674 regarding accessory dwelling units, ADUs, and to prohibit either the principal dwelling unit or the ADU from being used for short-term rentals, which are deferred rentals of either a principal dwelling unit or an ADU for a period of less than 30 days. I think this is a good one because... I think it's a real good one. Because the, the planning board's dealing with the ADU now, and it, 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 yeah. people are allowed to build these accessory dwelling units, and then all of a sudden they're renting them on a, by a nightly basis. <coughs> You've got a yeah. lot of problems. And especially, I see it as the beach. Yep. Uh, if we start having every, every cottage down there having an ADU, uh, we could be in serious trouble. So I strongly endorse Mr. Waddell's opinion. There we go. I agree as well. Okay. The next one is uh, again submitted by Portsmouth. Legislation allow municipalities to adopt additional surcharges under the meals and rooms tax on hotel occupancy with the municipality whereby deposited in funds that will be collected by the Department of Revenue Administration and paid to the municipal municipality into the capital reserve fund, revolving fund, or other special revenue funds to help for additional cost municipalities due to tourism. I fully support this. I, I support it. It would be up to the municipality. We'd have the the, the option of doing it or not doing it. Yeah. I think that's... And we could have that discussion and it would help us with what we're of paying in, in public safety. <coughs> this would be termed uh, enabling legislation. Would that be correct? In a fashion, yes. Yes, yeah, so um, I support it. I support it. Okay, so you're writing these down where you're the one going. I'm going. I'm beautiful. Yeah, I got it all set. <clears throat> See if the NHA <laughs> will support the legislation that defines short term rentals as a home business and permit municipalities in, to regulate and inspect these businesses for life safety issues. I suppose. I suppose. Do we already have that authority? or In a, in a sense, yes. Yeah, we do. I support it. I mean, if it gives it strong, gives us stronger language. I think it's stronger than what's there now. Yeah. Okay. I, s I agree with Mr. Waddell. As do I. Okay, the next one. Here. To yeah. see if the NHA will support the policy that requires the New Hampshire Department of Transportation to adopt, adopt, develop, and implement the type of program for the noise abatements on existing highways. What do you think they're trying to say here? My only concern for this, for me, is we just have a housing development yeah. that's going right next to Route 95. Mm -hmm. They knew 95 was there when they built it. Yep. Right. Um, now, that's like, why would you, and then you, you know, once they build it, then you're going to require the state or the town to build a, a noise barrier because they built a house next to the highway should be the responsibility of the, of the developer to do that as opposed to having the town tax rate pick it up. That's, yeah, I'm, a, I'm opposed to that. Opposed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I want to look at a barrier. <coughs> well, I don't want to look, it, it, it's not the fact <laughs> I don't want to look at it, it's right. the fact that <laughs> when people build next to a highway, it's one thing if they put a highway through a development, Yeah. After. and then they, they come through and they put the barriers up. 
But if you build next to a highway, knowing full well and good that that highway is there, right. then why should you expect, once you build there, to have the municipality or the state pick up the cost because all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, there's a highway there. I don't think that's... So the next one is to see if the New Hampshire Municipal Association will, will support legislation to reduce local property taxes by one, fully funding the New Hampshire Education Trust Fund as defined in RSA 9, 9, 38 and 2, significantly reduce the amount of $363 million being raised by the state property tax defined in RSA 76 semicolon 3 with any reduction to be replaced from other state revenues. That's a mouthful, first of all. Yeah. yeah. It is. And so they're trying to... Go ahead. Well, they've already reduced it because I know we've lost over $2 million in property valuation of this town because of what they did with the telephone poles for the t telephone companies. And, you know, if that carries over to the electric companies, which I suggest it will, uh, because that's unfair taxation, you're isolating the companies, you're not supposed to do that, uh, then, you know, I mean, you're probably, right now, in 10 years, we're going to lose an average of $10 million a year uh, in taxes that go to support the school education system and the school state school fund. Uh, those monies will have to be raised uh, in some other fashion. So uh, you've already killed $10 million. If you do the electric utilities, it's going to be 20 or 30 million or more. So uh, you're, you're taking a huge chunk of money out of that fund. I don't know where they're going to get money and make it up. They're running a deficit in a lot of cases in a lot of years on, on the general fund. Uh, it's just, I think they're, wor they're working themselves in a circle. I agree. I agree. I, I support the, the idea. The idea. The idea. But the method of how to do, they they come up with, yeah. I can't. As, as presented, I don't. I said, yeah. yeah. All right. I Good. Agree. Have so fun, there. Regina. Thank you. So, so Jim, you agree with? I will. Mr. Bean. <laughs> yeah, I do. One. Thank you. <laughs> A lot of agreement tonight. <laughs> so that's thank you. all. Thank you, Mr. I Chairman. Just say where we stand. Yeah, what you can. What they'll do is, you know, all the a whole bunch of selectmen there and stuff, right. and and then they just. Vote and you can get up and say, you know, we in Hampton we approved this right. to the selectmen, or we didn't, you know. Okay. So this this Maybe one here seems like a, another one of the same thing, where it says to see if the NM, NM, NHMA will support legislation to allow municipal library budgets to appear in a separate warrant article. Sounds like it's redundant. Yep. Yeah. Negative. Sure, they didn't put extra copies in there. Yeah, I think you might get. Oh, do I have? Yeah, I don't probably the same one. Yeah. Oh, I think we're okay. at the end. Okay, and we're at the end then. Yeah. Very good then. That's good. <laughs> I was just looking at that. Okay. So I will sign All this. Right. I was Regina. Yeah. To represent the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Yeah, we'll process that tomorrow morning. Okay. Next thing we have is Primex Insurance. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Primex uh, has uh, offered to extend. Uh, complete coverage that we have now for the next two years for a total of three years uh, and that they will not exceed 9% in their rate increase in each one of the years. Um, this is similar to a proposal we had and we accepted with uh, the uh, prior carrier we had. The only reservation I have about this is that we understand that there are a couple of insurance companies that are currently trying to set up a, 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 a program similar to Primex's. And quite frankly, if they do, I'd like to see what they're going to charge, because there will then be competition again for the insurance that we have. Travelers is one of them, and they were very serious about bidding on our coverage this year, but couldn't because of the requirements uh, of Primex and this in this special category here, this 5A legislation. Uh, we're not able to do that, so they're looking into forming a 5A. So, uh, what's your recommendation with here? My suggestion is we wait. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with that, do you? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this has a, uh, a deadline. There's a lot of unanswered questions for this. This, yeah. again, is a, a, a summertime uh, 11 August memo. I have a lot of questions. I've got a little familiarity with the business. Uh, if we put this on the agenda prior to the next meeting, okay, uh, on the 15th, right. um, we can have a better presentation. We can invite Primex in, and uh, I think that's a better response. Yeah. 
Thank you. You don't have enough information, period. Okay, very good. Next, number four, street name change, A. Wanda Robinson Road. Right. It's currently Robinson Road. Uh, 911 wants her first name put on it because it's too close to Roberts Road. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. And God bless Wanda. Uh, yes. Yes. Closing comments? Regina? I got nothing, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and I, I wanted to get back, Jim, and, I, and uh, perhaps I misspoke um, about uh, Senator Stiles' uh, comments earlier and did not mean to impugn uh, her uh, constituent service and uh, uh, stand corrected if I uh, misrepresented what she had to say. And uh, um, it was a big issue, and I think we resolved it well, and I thank Senator Stiles for her comments tonight, for her, uh, her tenure as an elected representative, and for taking the time to come out here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, adjournment. So moved. At uh, 2055. Well done. All in favor? Adjourned. <laughs>